Hello and welcome to video two for week five. One of the problems I gave you a couple of weeks ago when we defined spans of linear combination is to calculate one vector as a linear combination of some other vectors. And I want to return to that problem today, but I want to rephrase it. So it was write u as some linear combination of v and w. But anytime I have a linear combination, what I really have is a span. Linear combinations come from a span. And if I'm trying to write something as a linear combination of v and w, I'm trying to write it as a member of this span. And assuming that v and w are linearly independent, I can treat v and w as a basis for this span. So writing something as a linear combination is really writing it in terms of a given basis. So I want to rephrase the problem in terms of problem of bases and then give you some methods to solve that problem using row reduction. Let me talk a little bit about this to make this clear. Look at the vector 4, 5, and R2. In terms of the standard basis, E1 and E2, remember E1 is the unit vector in the x direction, E2 is the unit vector in the y direction, I can write V as a linear combination of the standard basis, 4 times the x direction plus 5 times the y direction, that's what it is. I can also express it in terms of different bases. So 4, 0, and 0, 5, so the the non-unit vector of length 4 in the x direction and the non-unit vector of length 5 in the y direction are also a basis of R2. They're linearly independent. And my vector v is 1 times this plus 1 times this. So it can also be expressed in that basis. And I can do this for any basis that I want. 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 are also a basis for R2. These are a couple of diagonal vectors. And it turns out that 4, 5 is 9 halves times this, plus 1 half times this. Feel free to check the arithmetic if you want. So we have, we have a thing here where we're taking a vector and expressing it in terms of different bases. 4, 5 in this basis, 1, 1 in this basis, 9 halves, and 1 half in this basis. This turns out to be a really, really useful thing to do for a bunch of applications of linear algebra. Often there are particular bases that make our life reasonable, for a certain application. So we would like to have everything expressed in those bases. That's what we're trying to do in this video. Let's do some examples and let's talk about how the row reduction algorithm and matrices now help us do this. So here's a plane in R2, a span of two vectors. I wanna write this in terms of the basis of the plane, assuming this is in fact a point on the plane. And the, the algorithm will tell us this because if we can't do this, if there is no way to write it as a linear combination of these two, it won't in fact be a point on the plane. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write this as some multiple of the first vector plus some multiple of the second vector. I'm trying to find these multiples a and b. But I can translate this into linear equations. Negative four has to be a times negative two plus b times zero. There's your first component gives you an equation. Negative four has to be a times one and b times negative two your second component gives you an equation, and seven has to be a times negative one and b times three. Your third component gives you an equation. So by looking at the components, we get equations, and now this is a system of linear equations. What do we do with those? We encode them as a matrix. What do we do with a matrix? We row reduce the matrix and try and solve. When we encoded them as a matrix, this was the column for a, this was the column for b, because the variables were those coefficients a and b. And now this tells me that a has to be two and b has to be three. And in fact, this was a point on the plane because it was two times the first vector plus three times the second vector. And that works very nicely. That's your algorithm, is you write out the linear combination you want, look at its uh, coefficients. So the first coefficient, the second coefficient, each coefficient gives you an equation, put it in a matrix, row reduce it, read off the solution, and then the solution will, if, if there is a solution, will give you the coefficients of your linear uh, combination. Let me do one more example. Here's a particular basis for R3. These are three linearly independent vectors in R3. So any vector in R3 can be written in this basis. And maybe this basis is useful to us. Maybe it nicely describes the geometry we want to work with. So I want to find numbers A, B, and C such this vector is some multiple of the first basis term plus some, some multiple of the second basis term, plus some multiple of the third basis term. So that's my equation. This is its first coefficient, this is its second coefficient, and this is its third coefficient. So 
So I'm just looking at uh, the coefficients as we go across. That gives me a matrix. I row reduce that matrix. I get this, and that tells me what the coefficients are. The columns of this matrix are A, B, and C, because those were the coefficients I was working with. So this tells me that this special vector that I wanted to do is 0 times the first one plus 1 half times the second plus 1 half times the third. 